Now on to number three. I know the first thing everyone would be thinking of is, ew, yuck, interfaces. But in reality, all we have to, I mean, we don't have multiple parts. All we have to do is just write the code work checker class, which doesn't seem too bad. Public code, public class code word checker. And then remember, the very important thing that you need to remember here is that we are implementing the string checker interface. So we need to include these two keywords, implements, string checker. A lot of easily, a lot of students I mean, in general, it's very easy to just overlook this if you're time if you have time constraints or you just know the solution you want to write it so badly that it's very easy to overlook this. So when you double check your work, this is something you should always look for. Like if it's an interface or if it's inheritance, to always have these two keywords if it's either implements or extends or the just string checker in general. So at this point, the prompt tells me I'm going to have. Two, I'm going to have three parameters, two integers and a string, private int a, private int b, and then private string s. But the next line gives me even more specific information. One of the parameters, uh, the two of the parameters are the minimum and the maximum word lengths of the code. So I'll change a to min and b to max, so it's easier for me to work around. And string s, I can just keep it s. It's not even, it's honestly not a big deal. Oh, and then at that point, we need to have two different constructors. The reason is because one of the constructors is assuming that I call all three of the variables at once, but the other is assuming I only call one of them. So it's really easy to write the one where I call all three. Public code word checker int min int max string s. I really like this format because I can just say this dot min equals min, this dot max equals max, this dot s equals s. Uh, nah, this spacing doesn't really look nice. Okay, now it looks better. Okay, remember that in college word solutions, from what I've seen, they'll have different variable names here. Like they'll say, let's say string S2, and then in this line, they'll make you say S equals S2. I mean, that's honestly, that's fine if you like it that way too, but I just do this because it's more systematic for me. But remember that if I have the same private declaration out here and I'm running the same string through the parameter, I need the keyword this. That is a must and that must be there all the time. <clears throat> so that's the first constructor. The second constructor, I'm only given a string. So I can say this dot s equals s. But then we're like, hey, what do I do for the other two variables? But then the problem tells me if, if, if I'm only given a single parameter, the default min is 6 and the default max right there is 20. So min equals 6, max equals 20. So here we have, we're done with both of our constructors. And that's all it really took. And now we need the one final method, the is valid method. Public boolean is valid. And this parameter I run is a string, string str. Now the thing here is I can actually, like believe it or not, it's just a one line return code. Because I have three conditions I need to satisfy for this to return true. The first condition is that it's within the given min and max length. And then pretty much, like for example, let's say the minimum is six and the maximum is 20. I automatically know if my string length is five or if the, my string length is 27, it's going to return false. It has to be within the min and max boundaries. So those are two conditions I have to check. And I have to use the and and operator because both of them have to be true. The third condition, which is a little bit more difficult to check, is to make sure that the string s, the symbol that we're reading in, is not included in the string. The keyword here is not, they even underlined it for you. And it's very easy to look over this, very important to look over that. You want to make sure that the string is not included in there. So let's just start off with the easy part. Let's just say, we'll make sure that the string, the string dot length, the length of the string is greater than the min, greater than or equal to, and to make sure that string dot length is less than or equal to max. The third condition that we must include is to make sure that this S string over here is not located in the word. And as we know, Java has this really cool handy tool we can use called index of, and index of returns tells us <coughs> if the string that we're looking for inside the parentheses is located in the word or the string that we are comparing it to. And we know that if it is not located, it returns negative one. So we can all we have to do is this, string.index of s is not equal to negative one. But here in this case, this would be bad because we want this to be equals equals because we want this to be negative one. If this is negative one, if this part right here is negative one, then that tells us that this S string is not found anywhere in str, which is what we want. It says not right here. That's the condition we want. So this is the boolean that we want to return. And that's all there is to question number three. Now on to question number four. 
<coughs> the first it's called array tester and the first method is actually very very straightforward public static int get column And so all we want is in this given 2D array, we just want to return all the elements in one of the given columns. It'll, just, it'll literally tell us which column it wants to go to. Now, I'm going to be end up returning an integer array data type. So let's first define that. Int r, and I'll call this ants because that's what we want to return, the answer. But the question is, what is the length of this? The length is the same as the number of rows. And that's actually very handy in this case. It gave us four rows and three columns. Remember, rows go like this, columns go like that four rows and three columns and we want to return the when we want our returning array to have the length of the number of rows as indicated even right here by this test result they gave us this thing has four this array this 2d array has four rows this 1d array that we return also has a dimension of four so this will have a dimension of the 2d arrays length then at that point all i need is just to read in it with a for loop What this is telling me is it's going to go through every row and it's going to input that entry into this answer right here. So I'm going to say ants i equals r2dic. And so the reason this works is because I'm like, I start off with a zero index. So in my other, the returning, um, the returning array I have right here, I'm going to start off with zero and increment it as I go on, which means like for the zeroth row in the 2D array, whichever number I'm adding, I'm going to add it to the zeroth or corresponding index in my 1D array. And that's why it works because it has the same length as the number of rows of this 2D array. And so in this case, I just do the C over here, which is the number of columns because I'm already going to the, which is the column index because it's a set column index. That's the, that's, our, that's the variable parameter reading right here. So I can just put that right here, and this is pretty much all there is to part A. All we see is that we just want, we already have a fixed column, but we want to go through all of the rows in that given column, and then just read the elements and add them to an array, and then return that array. And then now the second part looks like, honestly, a little bit uglier, a little bit more annoying. and. It, it's a little more it's a little bit more tedious work like I'm not even gonna lie it's honestly a little bit more tedious the thing here is we're gonna return a boolean if it's a Latin square or not and there's three conditions they're all listed right here the first is that there are no duplicate values in the first row now here's a very quick thing I want to say <coughs> here's a way to read the first uh, there's a way to read the first row obviously through a single for loop which we know all we'd have to say is say for int i equals zero to the length, and then I have a temporary uh, array outside, and then with a temporary array, add read in each time, and something look like this, for int i equals zero, let's say i is less than uh, square dot length i plus plus, and then outside I have a temporary int temp equals new int square dot temp. It's just something what it would look like. It's that for the zero width, the first row, this is what it would look like. I'd have to have a temporary integer array outside. And then after, it's, it honestly looks annoying because it honestly is a little bit annoying. It said I have to go through the first, I fix the zero width row and I have to go through every single column and then add that column I have, in this case, the temporary right here. And you might be asking why this isn't like square bracket zero, which is what's supposed to be for rows. You don't have to because it's a square. It has the same number of columns and rows. So this is what it looks like. But here's something that also works. Here's what also works. Boom. This call right here returns to me the zeroth row. Like that's literally so overpowered in this question because I save so much code from writing this than for writing this every time, especially for these last two conditions. It would really be a pain in the butt. So this is where this is really handy. So now let's just implement it into the question. The first condition I need to check for <coughs> if the row has no duplicate values. So this is what I, I just do an if, an if condition. If contains duplicate values, duplicates. Here's the thing. 
we don't want it to have any duplicate values. So if this thing, this contains duplicates method, will retain, will return true if there exists duplicate methods. And we say this is bad because it violates our condition of being a Latin square. So if this is ever true, we return false. Now let's go on to the second condition. The second condition is that all values in the first row of the square appear in each row of the square. So let's just write a for loop that goes through each row of the square in the first place. And I'll say int r, because r is row, it'd be easier to follow. And I'm going to say, if there is ever a point where, let's say, has all values is false, and has all values is false if all values aren't the same, let's say between square o, square zero, and square r. Then that point I want you to return false. And what so this line says right here is if there's ever a point where the rth row does not have the exact same values as the zeroth row, then return false. Because this con this condition right here for Latin square requires that all values in the first row are in every other row of the square. So this right here, this if statement says, if this condition is ever violated, and there's ever a row where all these values are not included in the rth row, then return false. So that point, that also makes sense. And here, we have one final loop for the third condition. And we say C for column, because we talked about the column of the squares. Column equals zero, column less than square dot length. Uh, technically for this problem, I could say I could get away with doing this, but because the square, technically I want to go through the number of columns, which is square bracket dot length. And I'll say to use this for this problem because it's good CS practice, but it's not necessary for this problem because the number of rows and columns is going to be the same for any square. So then at this point, I want to run the has values again, but this time I want to compare it between the zero with row and then the any of the, the, the seeth column get column square and then c and then if this is ever false return false and that pretty much this get column square c method we know how that works it takes the 2d array squee uh, sorry the 2d array square it goes to the c column and in this case the c is going to go between every single column of this 2d array which is good because this right here is going to go through every single column that we have and so there's ever a point <clears throat> where square zero has values that are not located or that are not found in any of the seeth column or any of the columns of the square, then that's going to return false. Because we need this condition to always be true for it to be Latin square. So if this is ever violated, we return false. And to say, very end, we say return true. Because the only way it's ever going to get to this statement is if none of these conditions have ever been satisfied. In other words, none of these restrictions have ever been violated. The only way to return true is if none of these three are if none of these three conditions are violated, which we check for here three times. And that's it. That's problem number four. So we pretty much did all of the APCS problems, FRQs from last year, like relatively quickly. And that's honestly all there is pretty much is that it's a lot of just critical thinking, repeated thinking, because it's very easy, let's say, for here, for me to add an extra exclamation sign without thinking. Or earlier, let's say, in the interface problem, I forget to instantiate with calling my private instance variable in the, sorry, not the interface problem, then problem number two, when I read the array list, like, there's just a lot of these tricky mistakes. Or when I forget to say implements over here in the array, in the interface problem, there's just a lot of these small mistakes that we should always look out for. But as long as we just conquer these mistakes, we're always going to be getting nine out of nine on every FRQ. And so yeah, that's it. That's this is our first comp sci video, like on AP Computer Science Review for Java, at least AP Computer Science A exam. So I hope you guys like this video. If you like this video, please drop a like, subscribe, comment down below on any other videos you want to see. If there's specific FRQ problems you'd like to see or just any concepts in general, um, just let us know and we'll definitely make a video on that before AP test comes around in a couple of Fridays. That way everyone watching will get a five. So thank you, stay tuned, uh, peace.